little taste it, cause you look tasty Don't keep me waiting on And oh, stop playing Oh, stop playing When you walk through time, stop And me, you keep on And oh, stop playing Oh, stop playing Girl, you always playing with it Always talking about it, so What's going on, everybody? It's the Raw Report. We got a we, we got a special guest in the building today. We got gubernatorial candidate Peter Lamage, who's running for office in the state of Connecticut. No sound. You can't hear it. No. Only you should music. be able to hear it. You you can hear it. You you're in here with us. Only music. Okay, it should be it's, it's delayed. So, how you doing, uh, Governor? Governor wow. to be. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it, sir. Oh, Thank absolutely. you. Thank, Thank you, you for coming. Um, Thank you on, sh on such short notice. Um, we got a uh, we got a lot to talk about today. We, we got him here for one hour, everybody. So he's going to answer all the questions. He's going to get uh, any questions you may have. Call in. You see the numbers on the screen. Um, tell us a little about yourself before we get started. Uh, well, thank you very much for having me. I know it's uh, Sunday afternoon, and you would right. rather be doing other things than talking to a uh, Republican who is uh, seeking the nomination for governor. But I think this is very important for the community that, that as Republicans, we do get our views out there in every community that we can in our state, because every community is going to be important, as and it is important uh, to us. Um, something with myself, I was born and raised in Albania. It was a communist country. Uh, my three brothers and I, we escaped communism about 30 years ago. And when I tell people that until the age of 20, I was a slave. I was owned by the government. I didn't have any freedoms whatsoever. Really? Pretty much I belonged to the government. And the moment that my brothers and I decided to escape, government agents showed up. They surrounded my family. They picked them up, took them into a concentration camp, and my father passed away in that camp. So I believe that he sacrificed his life so his, his sons could live in freedom. Right. And we did find freedom over here. We found the opportunity. Uh, the first job I ever held, I started flipping burgers. I didn't speak a word of English. Uh, after I learned some English, I was able to go to college. Uh, after I graduated from college in New York City, so I investigated white-collar crimes for the Giuliani administration. And after I got married, went to law school, became a lawyer. So I'm a family man. I'm a small business owner and a lawyer. So don't hold that lawyer part against <laughs> me. But, you know, I, I'm living the American dream. Right. I'm living the American dream. Absolutely, I am. And you're a New Yorker. I lived in New York for 17 years. I lived in Detroit for a while. From Detroit, I moved to other cities, and then I found myself uh, living in New York for 17 years. Then I moved up, up north. I live in Fairfield now. That's where I've been for nine years. I bought a house over there. Uh, it's a great town. I love, you know, the state of Connecticut. I mean, I voluntarily chose to live over here. Um, I'm raising three kids over here, so it's my state. Right. <clears throat> how, do you, how do you feel about the state of Connecticut right now? Uh, look, we're in bad shape. Anyone who tells you otherwise is not telling you the truth. And uh, uh, I'm quite conservative. And what, ma what makes me a conservative is my background. And conservatism works. And what I mean by conservatism is that when you talk about constitutional limited government, the founding fathers were very clear that they wanted you and I to have a limited government. Right. They wanted you and I to be free, to have the, the, the freedom and the liberty so we can prosper. What the uh, liberal wing of the party and the Democrats have done in this state, they have denied us that opportunity so we can prosper here. And I think that is the greatest argument that we can have right now, we're going to have right now, as to whether the failed liberal urban policies are working or not. And as it stands right now, they are working. You look at every city in our state that is failing, and every city almost in the nation that is having major problems has been under the controls, uh, the control of the Democrats for the past 30, 40 years. And right. the question is, can we do better than that? Not everything that they are implementing in the cities is wrong, but the majority of their policies are failing you and I, and I, I, I don't think we're going to be able to sustain this kind of life that, are, that is being dictated to us by Hartford and Washington. Now, do, do, you, do you believe there's corruption in Hartford? Uh, it's, uh, look, uh, we never, our Republican form of government was never meant to be a, to have career politicians. Uh, right. the, the, the founders were clear about this, that they wanted uh, ordinary folks, citizens like you and I, to get involved in politics, to serve the community for a limited period of time, and then move on to uh, doing private 
practice things, whether it's running a small business or practicing law or a doctor, whatever uh, the case may be. But uh, what we have done with this, people have realized that by being involved in politics, there is a way of life. And they have become uh, professional career politicians. I'm the only candidate in the race that is calling for term limits. I don't think anybody should go to Hartford and use that as a stepping stone to something uh, for the future. I think we serve the community for a couple of years, four years, five years, six years, and then move on. So I'm running as a Republican candidate to serve one term in Hartford and try to make a couple of changes and then move on to the private practice again. Now, I see some people in the, in the mm -hmm. comments already and they're asking mm -hmm. questions. And I'm going to kind of ask my questions and go off of them. Sure, that's fine. First, they want to know what's your, what's your, um, how do you feel about the right to bear arms? Um, I'm a Second Amendment guy. Uh, I'll tell you one thing. As a, a guy who, as, as, as a young guy who escaped communism, the first thing that the socialists and the communists did in Eastern Europe, they disarmed the people. And after they disarmed the, peop the, the people, they controlled the media and they controlled the educational system. Those three things are happening here. The, sec the, the, the right to bear arms hits in the Constitution, and the meaning of the Second Amendment is very clear that it states that you and I should be able to defend ourselves against a tyrannical government. It has nothing to do with hunting, but you should be able to defend and protect your family. You know, you don't expect the government to do that for you. They right. do it on your own. We as, as a nation, we do have a bloody history. If you go back to the founding of this country, we fought a, a revolutionary war against a, a, the most powerful nation in the world, the United Kingdom at that time, to make sure that the God-given rights, life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness are protected. And we must protect those rights, and one of them is uh, your ability to defend yourself. Oh, wow. Well, well said. Now, the reason I think they're asking is because with all the school shootings and, and shootings in, in communities like the one we're in right now, do you think that, that background checks and stuff like that are necessary? Oh, it exists. It is there. Look, I carry. I'm a Second Amendment guy. I mean, oh, I do, I'm not carrying today, okay? No, no, Don't no, worry no, about that, okay? I'm not. You know, but the truth, I, the truth is that I do carry. And um, look... Uh, in order for me to, to obtain a permit, to have a, a, a concealed carry permit, I had to go to the local police department. They took a picture of me. I was fingerprinted. Then they sent it to the state police. I was investigated by both the state and the feds before I got a permit. So right. anyone who carries legally, most likely, will never commit a crime. 99.9% .9 of the people who carry legal weapons, they don't commit crimes. Now, there is going to be a debate as to whether we can do a better job. I think the problem that we have with these mass shootings, they have a couple of things in common. Most of the people who commit them, they happen to have some sort of mental problem. So we do have that kind of issue that's a state we're going to have to do a better job handling this. The other thing is this, that most of the mass shootings are committed in places that they have a, a label that says gun-free zones. You don't, look at the president of the United States. He's protected by people with guns. You right. look at the vice president, the governor, the federal buildings, the banks, even a jewelry store has someone who has a gun protecting that property. Yet our kids, who are the most precious things in our lives, we send them to schools called gun-free zones. Don't you think we should have an armed guard protecting our kids? I think we should do that. Right, right. Mm -hmm. they, I, I, know, I do see some schools mm -hmm. that have police mm -hmm. on hand mm -hmm. at the school. The, they do. But now do you feel that teachers need to carry as well? Look, uh, that shouldn't be mandatory. Right. That shouldn't be mandatory. But I think we can do a better job protecting our kids as to whether we decide to give uh, certain teachers qualified to carry or not. It's a different argument. I think that people are going to disagree with it. Some disagree with it. We're going to have this debate for years to come. But as far as having a trained security guard, think about retirees who served mm -hmm. our country they came from the military police officers who have served for 20 30 years you know protecting you and i and our families you don't think that they are able to protect our kids if we give them that kind of liberty and hire them to do that job i mean they never let us down they wouldn't let us down now so i i for one if i were the governor i think i would i i would require that public schools provide security for our our kids now i did get a mm -hmm. i get a, did get a lot of inboxes mm -hmm. and texts they want me to mm -hmm. ask you how do you feel about What's going on in the country with police killing unarmed black men? Uh, um, anyone who tells you that there is not a problem with right. this would be denying the facts that do exist out there, whether it's black men, white men, they are Americans. Right. The way I look at the, the, the American people, I don't look at them at racist. I don't divide them. And the reason why I don't do that, that is the liberals' job. They are the ones who divide us in groups and races and uh, uh, rich and poor and all these things because by dividing us, it is easier to, to govern us or to run our lives. But any 
loss of life in our state, whether it's at the hands of the police department or police officers or otherwise, it's a loss to you and I. And I, for one, wouldn't stand for that if it's based on anything in, in, in that denies someone the right to defend themselves. Right. Uh, there's a problem. And this is a problem that we're, we're, I think it's a discussion that is going on. If we make that as the police department being racist and going after black Americans or African Americans, I do have problems with that when we point out a certain race. Right. Absolutely, I do. But then we go back to the too much government. The ones who are calling us and telling us that we should disarm the people are the ones who are telling us we should arm the police department. On the other hand, they complain about, uh, about the police department having guns and not having, uh, us not having guns. It's going to be a dilemma that we're going to have for a while to discuss this. But any loss of, uh, loss of life, it's a loss for you and I and everyone else in the community. Well, okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Oh, don't forget the number is call, number is 833-729-7778. Please call mm -hmm. in and speak to... Uh, gubernatorial candidate um pete lamage he's in the building he came and hung out with us he's here for an hour mm -hmm. um jobs in the state of connecticut what's your uh do, do we need more jobs here absolutely we are the only state in the union that have not recovered from 2008 recession Every other state has recovered it, but we have to go to the cause of the problem. It is the failed liberal policies that are destroying job creation in our state. We need to create wealth and equity. We have to pursue that American dream. But when you have the government dictating the way we run our lives, there's a problem. Right now, Hartford is involved in every aspect of our life. You know, right. what we have done, let's, we'll, we'll talk about the cities for a second. You look at the suburban, it's prospering. I live in Fairfield. It's right. a good town. But then I drive up north three miles. I'm in Bridgeport. You compare those two towns, one of them being Republican-oriented, the other one being run by the Fair Democrats. Republican you know, yet, oriented. oriented. It's Republican-oriented. Business-oriented is much more Republican. Then you go to Bridgeport, or you go to Hartford, or you go to you know certain other towns that are failing. The question is, why are these towns failing? You look at what the Democrats have done with the school system in the cities. They have destroyed the school system. They are destroying the traditional family. They want to make sure that you and I are dependent on the government so they can control that voting block that they need. When was the last time a Democrat would come into your town or other towns and make an argument and have the audacity of admitting the fact that their policies have failed and take certain measures to move the city forward? All they care about is you and I being under their control so they can get elected and reelected. You see them once in two years or four years when they come for the vote. You don't see them more than that. I think right. we have to hold them responsible for what they are doing to our cities. It is a disaster what they are doing. How, how would we create jobs? Though? I mean, it's very simple. I think uh, our state, it was the envy of the United States until 1992. I moved to this state because I loved it, and I still it love it. It was the richest you know, state. The richest point, state right? of the union. Right. Now, we passed the state income tax in our state, 1992. From 1992 to present, we have collected $126 billion in state income tax. Yet we are $62 billion in debt. Unfunded liabilities are at the hundreds of billions of dollars. The question is, where did the money go? Where did we spend the money? We lost one congressional district. We used to have six. Now we have five. That means we lost population. Services are not any better. Benefits are not any better. Where is the money going? It is the pet projects and the career politicians that are using the money with the intent of reelecting themselves and nothing else. What is the improvement that you see in your town? Just think about it. Is it better today than it was four years ago, six years ago? And if it's not, why not? Those are questions that I think the voters should ask every candidate that comes in front of them. You know, by constitution, we are charged with a very sacred uh, uh, mission as voters to make sure that we get it right. And I don't think we got it right in the past eight years. So do you think mm -hmm. the corruption is the, is the reason the it money is, is, is leaving? It is I, part of the corruption, and the unions come in when we talk about these things. You look at the unions, union bosses. You don't talk about rank and file. They are middle class. They are making 50,000, 60,000 a year. But then you look at the union bosses making hundreds and hundreds of thousands. Look at the Yukon. The president of Yukon has a salary of $550,000 a year in addition to two houses. Look at the retirees who work for the, for the state. They, uh, we have 1,400 of them right now collecting over $100,000 a year. Can we in private sector do that? Absolutely not. 
Absolutely not. So we're going to have to reverse, you know, the scope and reach of government, which is destroying us. And that's where I come in as a conservative. And when I talk about conservatism, uh, it has become a bad name because we allow the media and the liberals to paint us as if we are a bunch of crazy people and nothing more than that. <laughs> but the truth is that we are constitutionalists. We are people who believe in limited government. And we believe that every American deserves a chance at the American dream. And the government shouldn't dictate that. You as an individual should do that. Right, I see somebody mm -hmm. in the comments put, unions are corrupt. Yes. Um, and then you have mm -hmm. another comment, mm -hmm. where does our money go? Car tax every year, raising property, and mm -hmm. sales tax, and other states laugh at us. Does they do. Agree? They do. Absolutely, they do. Look, a car tax is an insult. Absolute insult. That should be reversed. And if I were the governor, governor, that would be an executive order that I would reverse it. it we shouldn't pay it. I bought a Toyota last year. Forerunner, the one that, you know, actually I parked in front of his business. Right. But, uh, and I paid the sales tax when I bought it. Now, just by to have to, to park that car in front of my house, I do pay taxes. Where is the money going? Why are you taking that money from me after I paid the taxes already? With regard to the unions, you think about the, the CBAC agreement that they got. It calls for four years, no layoffs. Right. Then for every four employees, you have to have a supervisor. For every four supervisors, you have to have a managerial position. We have employees called non-essential employees. What is a non-essential employee? Does that mean when they say non-essential employees don't come to work? Pretty much is irrelevant. We don't need them. In a private practice, you get rid of them. Look, I run a small business. If someone in my office is considered to be non-essential, I tell them, look for another job. And I think <laughs> that the state is going to have to do the same thing. Wow. Oh, that's, I, didn't, I never thought of that about that. So what, a non-essential employee, if you get rid of all of them, that's it a start. Well, what are we planning to do? My plan calls for every state agency, with the exception of law enforcement agencies, we're going to have to downsize them 14%. That will save you and I $1.3 billion right away. And the essential services provided by state agencies are going to be provided. So we're not going to get rid of the essential services. Think about the teachers. They do a great job. But because of the, the, the mandates that we get from Hartford, they wind up doing more paperwork than teaching our kids. Right. It's, 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 our schools are oriented towards social engineering instead of telling our kids that you're going to have to learn writing and reading and math. And we're going to have to go back to the basic traditional way of teaching our kids. And, and with regard to the teachers, again, I said they do a great job, but for the union. The same thing with state employees. They do a great job, essential services, but for the union. So we're going to have to weaken the relationship between politicians and unions. And we do that by introducing legislation to turn our state into right-to-work state. Go ahead, caller. This is Chief Chief. What's up, Rob? How you doing, man? I got a question. Okay. The question is about income tax. Okay. I want to know how the uh, candidate feels about if he's really thinking that less government, how does he feel about a flat tax, flat tax rate for both state and federal government, 10% across the board? No matter how much you make, you pay one sales tax, one flat income tax. So we're talking about a flat income tax. Yes. So, okay. I'll use this as chief chief. I'm asking a, a question here from a, a level. You believe that it should be less government? Oh, that too. So I want to know why is it that no one's really entertaining the fact of having one flat tax rate for both income tax and sales tax, 10% for anyone that makes any income for federal and for sales tax, it's one sales tax for every single state. I mean, it's, it's less complicated, less government. And if you make a dollar, Oh, we might have lost them. Yeah, but I, I got the question. Okay. Um, that's That was discussed a couple of years ago on the federal level. I would support a uh, flat tax for everybody. It will come from Washington, and I hope they're going to pass it. I would be supportive of it. But my plan, as far as the state income tax goes, we uh, have uh, a plan that anyone who's making less than $100,000 a year in our state shouldn't pay any state income tax right away. Corporate taxes should be down, uh, lowered. Uh, sales tax, gas, ta gas tax. Uh, here's the problem with revenue. We have a lot of money in our state. Right. The problem with it's spending. 
It's not the revenue. So what we have to do, we're going to have to turn off the amount of money that we send to Hartford. Hartford has to be made as irrelevant as possible in your life and my life. And the way you do that is by not giving them more money. Right now, they're introducing legislation to give uh, to, to pass the, the, the toll uh, uh, system that they want to do, the electronic tolls. That's another fee on you and I. Any Republican who votes for it will never get my vote again. Really? That's Absolutely. Somebody just asked that question. Absolutely. How do you feel about the state Absolutely. About implementing state tolls? Absolutely it, not. Do you, you don't think it will work? Absolutely. It shouldn't. We should not allow that thing to happen. It's another fee on you and I. Why should I have to pay to come to your house? I live in this state. I pay taxes already. Why should it make it more difficult for people to, to do business? And instead of attracting businesses and people to move into our state, we're, we're, we're forcing people to move out and businesses to move out because of this. I'll give you another example. If you're an illegal alien right now in our state, right. you get in-state tuition. You get sanctuary cities, you get a driver's license, and we have a bill in Hartford introducing in-state financial aid for illegals. In other words, it pays to be illegal in our state. And honestly, I benefited from the immigration laws of this nation. I became an American right. because of you guys embracing us and allowing us to come over here. Right. But then why should I penalize American citizens in this town, not giving them financial aid, but an illegal alien who shouldn't be here at all is getting, uh, is getting in-state tuition and financial aid. So we have our priorities wrong. We're going to have to put the citizens of this state first again and then think about the others. Now, if, mm. if how long do you think something like that mm. would take, uh, tolls coming to the state of Connecticut? Uh, they may pass it under this administration, but if I were the governor, I'll just re uh, repeal it. Oh, okay. I would repeal it. Absolutely, I would. So it could happen mm. under this it, administration. I'm, a, I'm afraid it could. I'm afraid it could, but the Republicans are standing strong not to allow it to happen. I'm afraid they, they may pass it before the November election. Now, and if, are yeah. there any, uh, any Republicans that do support it? Uh, the ones that I know, I don't think they do. I don't know anyone who does, and there are a number of Democrats, actually, who disagree with it. Okay. Now, I had somebody come mm -hmm. in and say, what do you think about getting rid of welfare programs to the many of us who are <clears throat> many people who are abusing the system? Uh, I investigated white collar crimes in New York City for a number of uh, mean, years, I, 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 and I had to deal with this. Uh, look, uh, two weeks ago, there was a lady who was arrested in Shelton uh, because of the abuse and fraud that we have in the system. She was making $100,000 a year defrauding the system. You and I are paying for this. Uh, the way I look at it is I think the welfare system, uh, it was meant to be a safety net, not a way of life. Now, the Democrats have promoted that to become a way of life. That is harming the inner cities more than anyone else. And I think if people should uh, receive welfare for a number of years when we can provide training to them and give them the opportunity to become productive members of the society by getting a reasonable job, I think that eventually is going to have to be done because we have to reform the welfare system. We can no longer sustain it. We pay anyone on welfare right now makes about 40000 a year. And forty thousand on welfare? Yes. It's oh, wow. approximately forty thousand. That means about twenty dollars an hour. The question is what is the incentive for these individuals if they are able bodies to look for a job? It's zero, zilch, nothing. Why should they look for a job? Because we have turned this into a way of life and it has to be reformed. Wow. Mm. Now I see some people saying that mm. you wouldn't they they look at it as welfare being you mm. said someone mm. makes forty thousand per yes. year? Yes. Off of the welfare system. Yes, sir. And not, yes, sir. not having a job. Not having a job. And I'll give you an example. I have an office in uh, the Bronx, New York. I had someone, I needed a paralegal to add to my staff. She showed up and she said, I need a part-time job. I said, look, I'm looking for a full-time employee. I need someone full-time. She said, well, if I get a job full-time, I'll lose the benefits. So uh, I need a part-time one so I can collect from the government or the taxpayers. So we're, we're, we are enticing people to move into the system because of the benefits, not to use that as a way, as a, as, as a safety net, because people are going to need your help and my help. Right. If we have uh, uh, people who are disabled, people who, you know, have kids that are in the, you know, uh, and uh, are being raised in a way that may not be able to support that family otherwise, we, we owe them big time. And as a Judeo Christian country that we are, we better do that. And America has done a great job doing that. But we have gotten to the point that people have no incentive of looking for a job at this point if they have been in welfare for years. Right. Now, mm -hmm. you mean when mm -hmm. wealthy, you mean food stamps? Cash assistance. Yes. Stuff. It's a okay. combination of a uh, number of things that they get. It's public assistance, pretty much, but we call it welfare. So, right, you know, yeah, but it's, it's a different, you know, uh, um, sources of income that they get. Now, I had somebody mm -hmm. ask me, do you think that the educational system in cities mm -hmm. like New Haven, Bridgeport, and Hartford 
are different than the ones in the richer cities like Fairfield County? Richer yes. counties, like you think it's different? Absolutely. Absolutely, it's different. If you don't, if we don't see it, we're not being realistic with each other. We're not being truthful. But what we have done with the educational in the cities, it is by design. The Democrats, and I'm the only one who talks about this fearlessly. The Democrats, they want these cities to fail. They are not interested in seeing you and the city how would prosper. They, how would they benefit from it failing? Because they control you. It's a voting bloc. Okay. The prosperity. Prosperity is the biggest threat to the Democrat Party. If people prosper and become independent, the Democrat Party becomes obsolete. Now, what I mean by that is that look what they do. They are trying to divide us as a nation and as a state in various groups, in genders, the rich, the poor, the white, the blacks. That's all they talk about it. The Democrat Party has become a party of uh, uh, enticing dependency. And we have to break that cycle. And by preventing you from getting the proper education in the cities, they, they have control over the people. And this was implemented in Eastern Europe 70 years ago. They controlled people through education. They controlled the educational system. They controlled it through the Second Amendment that we just discussed and the health care. Look what we're doing in this nation and the media who is controlling them. It is all about dividing us. A united citizenry is a threat to the career politicians. Wow. Yeah, I, I always thought that. Do you think it's because Fairfield County is a richer state, more money's put into there, so education, you know, books and no. teachers make more money? I guess. No, I'll, I'll give you a couple of examples. I mean, you have schools, school systems, and, you know, certain schools. But for example, Waterbury, we spend about $16,000 a year per pupil. Fairfield spends less. Oh, but it really? has to do with the, 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 the strangulation, if you will, of the teachers' union on these cities. And they want to make sure, look, I introduced, I would introduce legislation that money follows the child. And by, what I mean by that is, and, uh, is that if you have a kid going to a failing school, you don't think you should have the option of picking up that kid and the check that we spend per pupil in that school, take them to a non-failing school in the district or to a private school or parochial school? Why shouldn't you? You don't think that a modern Bridgeport loves their kids as much as my, my wife in Fairfield? Right. They expect the exact same thing from their kids. They want their kids to succeed. What we have to do with the cities, we have to give them the option of succeeding, and that starts with education. The educational system in the cities, by design, is a failure. Wow. Mm -hmm. You think the people at the top of the, of, uh, the uh, educational system, like superintendents of schools, mm -hmm. and do they mm -hmm. make too much, or is that appropriate? With That's where most of the money goes, administration. I mean, right. we pay our teachers fifty, sixty thousand a year. Yet you have a principal who's making two hundred fifty thousand a year. It's really? the administrative cost that is killing our educational system. It's not the teacher's salary. It's not the teacher's salary. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. It's the administrative cost, and it's the mandates that we have to abide by that are coming from Hartford and to a certain extent from Washington. And if you don't abide by them, you get penalized. You know, look look what Malloy did right now with the smaller towns. Every uh, fiscal conservative town is being hit hard with the state aid. Pretty much they're going to be on their own. Yet the, the, the larger cities are getting a ton of money from Hartford and on the other hand they are failing. Look at Hartford. It has to be bailed out. Hartford, not even 100 years ago, was one of the richest and most prosperous towns in the United States. Yet, Hartford, we, Connecticut. Absolutely. And now we have to bail it out. $550 million. When was the last time somebody came to bail out you and your family? Why should we bail out Hartford? They made a mistake. They should deal with it. It's, it's, it's very simple. I don't think we should reward failure. We've been rewarding failure for way too long in our state. And you feel that's based around corruption? Absolutely. Absolutely. Look, Luke Bronin, who is the mayor uh, of uh, Hartford, moved from Greenwich to Hartford to become a mayor over there because Malloy rewarded him for his loyalty. Now he wants to run for governor. Do I really want next governor who is allowing a city to go bankrupt to be the next governor of the state and bankrupt the whole state? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So wow. it's, uh, there is corruption, no question about it. I always thought that the Democrats and Republicans, that was always a divide to me. Like, you know, like it's, it's a lot of people in poor cities believe that Republicans are the bad guys. That's, that's what's. <laughs> but we're the bad guys. <laughs> Let me give you an example. The Republicans right now, right. for the past 15, 20 years in our state, they are nowhere to be seen. 
You look at the governor is a Democrat. The lieutenant governor is a Democrat. All the elected federal uh, 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 offices are held by the Democrats, whether it's the House of Reps or the U.S. Senators. The majority in Hartford was Democrat until last year that the state Senate became 1818. Now, how can you blame the, Demo uh, the Republicans if they are nowhere in power in our state? It is a one-party state system that we have over here. It's the Democrats. And they are ruining the country, and uh, I mean the state. They are doing that. We don't have the Republicans to blame at this point. But if they come to power and they don't deliver, then you and I have the right to do that. That the, the poor job that the Republicans have done is that we have not defended ourselves properly or protected ourselves properly and promoted Republican principles in the cities. We are nowhere to be seen in the cities. And that's a problem for the Republican Party. And I do intend to change that. I'm the, the only candidate who spent a lot of time in the cities. Will you have the, a lot to clean up, you think? When it's, you it's going to be a lot of work. But we have to be very honest. Look, start with the cities by giving them the option of educating their kids to a school of their choice. Right. And that is the threat that the Democrats have. I'm being criticized by the Democrats as we speak and the teachers union because I'm calling for that. And as I said before, your kids deserve the exact same opportunities as mine. Now, Nothing less. The, Nothing the, the less. Choice, the school of their choice. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you mean private schools? Yes. Oh. Absolutely. And you should, the amount of money that we spend per pupil, which is taxpayers' money, you should be able to pick up that check and take your, your kids to a, to a school of your choice. If there's a balance that you have to pay, so be it. You pay for it. Right. But we should spend, let's say that we spend $10,000 per pupil in our state. Why shouldn't you be able to get that check and take your kid to an unfailing school? That is a threat to the teachers' union. Absolutely, because some public schools are going to collapse. So be it. Competition is good. It's capitalism. Give them, give your kids and my kids the opportunity to succeed. That is the future of this country, and we're not providing that right now to them. Oh, so you, you do believe that if things don't change, then schools in this state will fail? They are failing. They some are of the failing. cities are failing. Some Hello? of the cities are failing. Absolutely. I mean, can you afford to send oh, your oh, kids? Oh, oh. Ahead, your, if you send your kids right now to any institution in our state, higher learning institution in our state, how much does it cost you? Why right. do we have to pay so much? You look at Yale University over here, which doesn't pay any taxes to this city or to the state, by the way. But oh, that Yale is, doesn't pay any taxes? No, and that is the richest wow. institution in the state. The richest, where is the money coming from? Why do I have to pay sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 a year to educate a child in my state? You know, there is something wrong with our, our educational system. Absolutely. Go ahead, caller. This is Keith again. Okay. Another question. Okay. All right. So I understand the opinion that if a, if a, if a, a city gets bankrupt, that public. But I guess I, my question is, is that Connecticut is a blue state, at least mostly Democrat. Would the Republican Party feel the same way if it was a city that was bankrupt? That was Republican run or Republican control, because I do feel that that's an argument that is being uh, tossed around. And because Connecticut is a blue state, mostly Democrat, and whereas uh, maybe a state like Texas is most Republican, I mean, I don't see anyone having an objection of bailing out a, a city in Texas that has been bankrupt because Republican run. But yet Connecticut, with Hartford, they made some mistakes, but the Republican Party has a big problem on on saying that they should be bailed out. If you made a mistake, you shouldn't let the citizens pay for that, is my opinion. They should be bailed out like any other state. Now, uh, I didn't hear part of the question, but are you still talking about Hartford being bankrupt? Are you talking about Hartford being bailed out? Yeah. Well, he, he, uh, I guess he's saying, shouldn't Hartford be bailed out? It shouldn't. It shouldn't. I mean, it shouldn't. The thing about it is that Absolutely the Republican not. Party feels that you know Hartford shouldn't be bailed out with the amount of debt, but it's because I believe that Connecticut is a blue state in general, Hartford being one of the bluest states out there, and uh, Democrat controlled. And if this was Texas, probably feel the same way. I guess, you know, a city in Texas. And I, I don't feel it's necessarily a start, but I'd like him to at least tell me why he feels be, it would be the same across the board. Um, if, if I understood your question, I believe I did. But look, if we bail out Hartford, 
which is going to be your money and my money. Uh, Bridgeport may be next. New Haven may be next. Uh, what other New Britain may ask us for to do the same thing? The concern that I have is that we shouldn't reward that kind of behavior, where someone cannot run the city properly and be fiscal conservative with your money and my money. I do have problems with that. But uh, the Republicans are fighting for the bankruptcy of Hartford. If they want to declare bankruptcy, that allows them to renegotiate all the contracts that they have by law. Now Detroit did that and Detroit is turning around and cities that were allowed to declare bankruptcy and and renegotiate the contracts they are coming back in in very very strongly actually and if Hartford is not allowed to go through the same thing because we're bailing them out I'm afraid that we're going to see other cities asking for the same thing and then you know I would rather stick by saying that the citizens deserve a chance in our state to succeed and if certain cities cannot run their own affairs properly uh, if you and I are allowed to fail in our society show should this uh, uh so should the cities absolutely mm -hmm. um, now they're saying mm -hmm. a lot of people are saying in the comments should we just let hartford just go bankrupt let it fail let it fail absolutely I took that position uh, there was an op-ed I was hit hard when I took that position and let it fail they are going to have to learn a lesson that your taxpayer your taxes and my taxes shouldn't be wasted. Do you know that you have elected officials in Hartford right now who gave themselves an increase in salary, yet the city's failing? Can they do that? Yet, they can give themselves an increase? As the city council, as the city council, they can do it. And they did it. They did it. You have people in Hartford, elected officials, making over $100,000 a year, and the city's failing. You think we should reward that kind of behavior? I mean, I have three teenagers at home. And if there's a certain attitude when it comes to managing the money and running the household properly, you don't think as a parent I'm going to be critical of them? You don't think that the taxpayers who are the voters who elected these people should be critical of their behavior? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I let them fail and rearrange the whole contractual relationship that they have with the employees. Now, if they failed, mm -hmm. how would that affect the rest of the state? Uh, positively. It would. Absolutely. It would teach a lesson. It will teach us a lesson that you cannot waste the taxpayer's money. That is the biggest message that we're going to have to send to Hartford, that whoever goes to Hartford for the next four years as the governor should go there with the intent of dismantling that mentality, that business as usual is not going to be done over here. Our state is going to have to be turned around, and we have no reasons not to be the greatest state of the union again. We have what it takes. We have smart people, dedicated workers, dedicated citizens who are willing to do this and take the risk but we have to remove the government from the position of dictate in our lives. Wow, a lot of people saying you're right about saying let it fail. I didn't think now with other states who don't have all these taxes, how do they how do they Oh, they're doing better. They're Look, doing better. New York right? City, New York City has a socialist mayor, De Blasio. He's a socialist and he's doing better than us. He realized that by increasing taxes and property taxes and penalizing people and penalizing <clears throat> producers, he's not he's going to uh, uh, collapse his own city. So we have businesses leaving Hartford wanting to move to New York City or going to, to Massachusetts. The question that we should have for ourselves, why are they leaving us? They had GE. GE was in Fairfield. Right. My town. They left. The question is why? I used to do a radio show, W O um, whatever, G G G R. Uh, but I invited some of these politicians to speak over there when when uh, uh, G E uh, was leaving, and no one had the answers to why they are doing that because they knew that taxes, regulations, and mandates forced a major corporation to leave our state. We have to reverse that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now I did get a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. Legalizing marijuana could that help? Hey, it depends on the quality, okay? <laughs> now, <laughs> look, I don't know what I'm going to get, okay? Right, so, right, right. <laughs> look, I don't, I don't know, hey, I don't know <laughs> but it depends on the quality. Uh, you know, look, I uh, never smoked. I hope my kids will never smoke it. Right. And if they do, I have three teenagers, I'll be prepared for it. I'm a libertarian when it comes to that. Uh, I think social issues are more a libertarian issue. Uh, we don't have the data that we need to make a judgment on this on this call. And I don't, and most politicians don't. But we should not legalize marijuana with the purpose of uh, uh, collecting more revenue from the taxpayers. In other words, the state does not need more money from us. But if we have the proper data to have this discussion properly, let's say that someone is uh, you know, under the influence of marijuana, can the employer fire them? Right. Can they drive? 
can they be arrested under the influence of this this legalized substance that we're talking about? I don't think we have had the proper discussion yet as to whether we can do that or not. But personally, I hope my kids will never do it. Okay, yeah, yeah this, that's this, my personal opinion. Now that idea but, is but, up yeah, in the air, right? Yes, now, absolutely. Right? But on the other hand, I do have a set of beliefs that I personally believe, but it doesn't mean I would ever impose those beliefs on anyone else. But personally, I tell my kids not to do it. I do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I do. Yeah, because I, mm. I don't know if it's like you said a DUI mm. or, or an... we we don't have that kind of study and data and and and, and discussion yet. We we better have the proper discussion as to whether it's worth it doing it or not. Now, someone mm. did ask, if, what if it's mm. medical marijuana? Absolutely, absolutely, I support it. You do absolutely. support it. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Mm. So mm. basically, what mm. we're getting at is there's a lot of corruption. Mm. Yes. And mm. so we're in. How much debt are we in, are we in right now? Say Sixty-two that. billion. Uh, uh, billion. Sixty-two billion. Yes, sir. That's a ton of money. Yeah. We owe a lot. We're going to wind up paying that money one way or another. Uh, how are we going to do that? If we don't spur growth and allow people to create wealth and equity and be able to bring jobs back into our state and businesses into our state, I don't think we can sustain this way of life that we have. We we have problems with spending. We have problems with the scope and reach of government. We better bring that within the confines of the Constitution as soon as possible. Now, I don't know if this is true, but I was told that Yale pays $8 million a year in taxes. Is that true? I, I don't have that number. I don't okay. want to mislead you. I don't have the answer. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I don't okay. have the answer. My understanding is that they don't. They don't but pay. even if they pay $8 million, that's peanuts. Okay, that's peanuts. Really? I, I don't think, look, I don't believe in penalizing any businesses out there because they are uh, successful. I right. believe in rewarding businesses and individuals. But then we have to have a proper share of the burden that we have in our state, whether it's Yale or other major institutions in our state. They're going to be helpful to the state. They're going to have to share the burden that we have. Just got a great question. Mm -hmm. People are leaving Connecticut. How would you draw them back if you became governor? Uh, we're gonna put a uh, roadblock on 95 South. Make sure they don't leave. They can get out. Okay. Uh, I know a lot of the, people are going uh, south where yes. the houses are cheaper. You know the the interesting thing is this: that every <clears throat> citizen or corporation or company or or business that is leaving us is moving to a state that is tax friendly that has less oh. government, whether it's Florida, North Carolina, the other you know places. We're going to have to do better than New York, Massachusetts, and Vermont. And they, Because they are doing better than us. Absolutely. They're doing better, doing better than us. Yeah, absolutely. We have businesses leaving for Massachusetts. That's right. an embarrassment to our state. We should be able to, through tax reform, uh, regulation reform and mandates and reforming the CBAC agreement that we just passed, we should be able to turn businesses around so people can invest and businesses can invest here. But if we don't do those three things right away, we're going to see more bleeding in our state, and it's unfortunate. Yeah, I worked for yeah. a company that left for New Hampshire. Yes. Because it was yes. cheaper to function you know, absolutely. in New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, and that's, that's and I, I think that leaders in Hartford and, and you know I, I don't use that term very loosely because we have very few leaders. I think we're devoid of leadership in Hartford completely. But I think they should have the audacity of facing the voters and tell them that what we implemented so far in Hartford is not working. We're gonna have to reverse it. And I think that is the biggest void that we have right now between uh career politicians and the voters. And we better make that connection as soon as we can because the voters and the taxpayers are desperately waiting for the right decisions to be made in Hartford. And 50, you said 50 billion. Yes, 62. 62 billion 62. in debt. In debt, 62 billion. That's yeah. a lot of money. It's billion with a B. You know, and, and the question is, where did the money go? How did we waste that money? As I said, population is decreasing. Businesses are leaving. Uh, we're not doing better with services. Uh, uh, the citizens are not doing any better. We're not creating jobs. Wealth is not being created. Equity is not being created. What is the American dream that you and I are pursuing any longer? Have we right. lost the, 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 the meaning of Americanism, that the American dream means everything to us? What's wrong with capitalism? You know, there is going to be a confrontation in Hartford between two irreconcilable uh, uh, entities, and that is socialism or statism and free markets. We better defeat socialism. Socialism is in our state, and socialism is all about government control and command. We better defeat that. Okay. Now, the small business mm -hmm. owner, is he, mm -hmm. is he feeling the effect of what's going on in Hartford right Absolutely. now? Absolutely. 
They are. I'll give you an example. In Ansonia, which is a Republican town, has a Republican mayor. I have a friend of mine who had to shut down his business because he was paying property taxes, business tax, sales tax, and then they placed a tax on his business for the number of refrigerators that he had in his bakery. He couldn't afford it. He had to shut it down. You know, you just have to reverse the, the negative effect of the tax burden in our small businesses. We have to reverse it. So you don't, you don't think it's major corporations that are shutting down the mom and pops? Oh, no, it's, no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. 85% of businesses in our nation are small businesses in our state, too. So it has, competition is good. Right. If, if, if small business is allowed to compete and prevent uh, by allowing, removing the government from their business, if you will, because it became business, business. But the truth is that it's the government that is pushing them out of business. It's not the corporations competing against each other. There's nothing wrong with two corporations competing against each other, small businesses. That is good because the prices go down. If right. you and I have the option of buying a phone somewhere around here that one of them sells the same quality of phones for $10 cheaper than the other guy, I'll go and get it over there. Look at the gas stations. I'll give you a very simple example. If you go to Fairfield, we have four or five gas stations. Mm -hmm. Gas is cheaper in Fairfield than Bridgeport okay. because they have fewer gas stations. Competition is good. Capitalism is based on competition. There's nothing wrong with that. It lowers uh, uh, the prices, and you and I will get the same services for less money, and it's good. Call mm -hmm. go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, excellent, sir. Peter, hi. This is Frank from Reading, Connecticut. How are you? I'm doing very well, sir. Thank you for joining us. Hey, I really like what you say. I mean, you're giving out my vote. Side there, the mayor of uh, New Britain and the mayor of New Britain, you or not. You're not listening to me. Did you read that poll? And I hope it's for it because I really, my friends like you and I do too. Thank you. Uh, bye bye. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Actually, I read it. Uh, look, the media is not going to support a Republican. Uh, I don't expect the media to be supportive of me. I mean, they've been actually very critical of me. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, they're pointing towards uh, S, uh, not S, the, the other one who was the Secretary of the State from the Democrat side and a Republican who is not even running yet or hasn't qualified to run yet. So I think the media is just trying to grab some uh, headlines out there. But the Democrats are the ones who have uh, made me the primary target as far as the Republicans go by tweeting that Peter Lumage is, it's no different from Donald Trump. The only difference is their hairdo. Actually, I'm better looking than him. Uh, but... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh, you gotta have some fun of this, man. Okay, right, come right, on. Right. <laughs> uh, but no, I, I did read the article, which means nothing to me. I'm not expecting the the current actually to endorse me. Trust me. Now, are you a, uh, are you a Trump supporter? I am. Okay, and they're coming after you because of because uh, you support Donald Trump. No, for a couple of reasons. Uh, if I get the nomination, if I win the primary, I'm your next governor. And uh, some Republicans and most of the Democrats are uncomfortable with that because I'm an outsider. I don't know anybody anything. Nobody owes me anything. I'm not looking for a job. I don't need a job. I'm blessed. I got a business. I got, I'm an attorney. I got my own practice. If I don't win, I'll be back to, the, to uh, my office the following day. But if I go to Hartford, the fact that I'm not beholden to anyone, that is a concern that they have. Oh, and you won't owe anyone anything. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely. And that's a concern that some Republicans do have and the majority of the Democrats, and that's why they're going after me. But uh, did I support the president? Yeah, I did. I voted for him. I campaigned for him. I went to the inauguration. Uh, my wife and I had a blast over there. And if anybody ever gets a chance to see the peaceful transfer of power in the United States is a phenomenal experience, and anyone who can do it should do it, whether you're Republican or Democrat. Right. Someone mm -hmm. said... He's talking straight along the Republican line. Capitalism has victimized the underclass and middle class for centuries. Is that is that comment based around media? Media. It's the, misleading. The media. Capitalism capitalism has lifted more people out of poverty than any other system out there. I don't see people from the United States or the Western world escaping to Cuba or North Korea or China. But I see them escaping from those socialist and communist countries seeking freedom and opportunity in the United States and Western world. The reason is capitalism. You think about haves and have-nots. How many people in the United States were have-nots years ago? And I was one of them. I came to the United States without any money. A church took me in and my brothers. 
and they sponsored us. When you and I young, started. You came into this twenty years old. Oh, you was 20. I was twenty years old. I'm fifty, by the way, just in case people want to know that. So, <laughs> uh, but the truth is that if you pursue the American dream through hard work in the United States and have some determination to go after that dream, and as long as the government stays out of your way, you can still achieve the American dream. Nowhere else in the world can you do what we do in the United States. Poverty right. in the United States, unfortunately, is promoted by the government, especially the left, because that's control, and they want control of, uh, over you and I. So stepping on poor people will make government richer. Mm -hmm. Is that what you Yeah, well, not only richer. They want to make sure that they have that control over you power. and I. Right. Look, uh, th let's talk about the Democrats for a second. And, you know, I, uh, if the Democrat Party were the JFK Party right now, most likely I would be a Democrat. The Democrat Party, the left wing, has taken over that party, has become the Socialist Party. Think about the, the protests that they are holding all, all over the United States. You barely get to see the American flag any longer being raised in those places. Right. That's an embarrassment. We are Americans above everything else. And when we allow politicians to divide us into groups and classes and, you know, they are achieving what they want to achieve, a united citizenry that prospers does threat the left wing of the party. They don't want to see that. And I think we better come to our senses and realize that. Now, is capitalism perfect? Absolutely not. It's right. the best system we can have right now. Wow. So you do believe media is... <laughs> is controlling the people as well as the Democrats. It is shaping their... their, their, the their process, uh, right? it, it, it's, it's doing that. And uh, look, uh, what you're doing right now, right here, it is completely independent from the major media outlets out there. Right. People are freely expressing their concerns that they have and questioning me, and rightfully so. I'll tell you one thing. Maybe Fox News or CNN wouldn't allow me to have this conversation because I'm telling the truth. And you guys want to hear the truth, and people should hear the truth. You know, and I'm, I'm just picking on Fox News and CNN, comparing those to right. one conservative, the other, the other one liberal. But if it doesn't fit their agenda, their narrative, you will never be able to go over there. And I appeared on Fox News a number of times. I didn't change my position. I was hit hard when I, when, when I went against, uh, uh, after illegal immigration. Absolutely. Republicans hit me hard on that, but that's my belief, and I'm not going to change that. I think that you deserve, or my kids and your kids and our families deserve to take priority in our state. We're the citizens of this country. We're electing these officials. Why should Blumenthal or Murphy, for that matter, be concerned about someone who is deportable, removable from the United States much more than your kids and my kids? They're spending more time on the media and other outlets talking about these people who are being removed from the United States after they went through the due process. And right. they're not talking about your kids and my kids, you know, enduring what we're enduring in this state. So I do have concerns with politicians who think about others who shouldn't be here instead of your kids and my kids. That's why we need leaders. We don't need politicians. And you uh, said Im illegal immigrants mm -hmm. are able to go to school for free. They get in-state tuition. In-state tuition. They do. And they are illegal. And my nephews and nieces who live in New York City, if they decide to go to Yukon, they will pay out-of-state tuition. In other words, we're penalizing American citizens and rewarding illegals. We shouldn't do that. Don't they have a program? Mm -hmm. I thought they had a program in Connecticut where in-state mm -hmm. kids could mm -hmm. go for free yes. or at a, at a less rate. Yes, that's in-state. But and we're applying the exact same thing to the citizens who were born here, the taxpayers who were born here to the ones who shouldn't be here. Is the same standard. But what I said by nieces and nephews, if they move from New York City, which is on the other side, uh, they want to go to UConn, they will pay out-of-state tuition. It's extra money that they have to pay to attend UConn. And I don't think that's fair to the you know citizens of, of this country. Yeah, my it's not fair at all. My daughter's graduated yeah. from UConn, so it's, congratulations. It's that. still a pretty good school, but I'm pretty sure you're a couple of thousands in debt, and you're going right, to wind up right, paying right, it. Right. So. <laughs> right. Now, you said it would take you, would it take you more than four years to fix what is allegedly going on right now. Yes, you need eight years. You and need eight years. Yes, to do that. And I'm not going to get eight years. I'm not going to get reelected. I'm not even thinking about reelection. Why I not? Just wanna, well, I want to go over there and get things done. And if right. I get things done, most likely the media, the Democrats, some Republicans are going to be uncomfortable. So I would need another Republican to pursue that blueprint that we're going to establish to save the state for the next four years. But if I get the approval rating of getting reelected, I would pursue it. Otherwise, I wouldn't be there. Look, if I get elected, I'm going to be a conservative. 
conservative principles, which is a good thing. Conservatism believes that every American should be able to prosper, that your God-given rights of life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness should not be infringed upon by the government. And if I go to Hartford and do that and give you the opportunity to prosper, you're going to see thousands and thousands of people being bused to Hartford to hold protests and demonstrations against me. I'll face them. I want to save the state. They'll, if, oh, they'll, they'll, they'll have demonstrations against you. Absolutely. And I know that because the, the policies that were, were introduced, such as right to work state and reforming the welfare and going after sanctuary cities and these things, they, these are not very popular things out there. And I know that we have to do them. I believe we have to do them. And I believe that the general population out there is ready to make those reforms. And I'm going to go directly to the people instead of dealing with, uh, you know, career politicians and, you know, other people in Hartford. Oh, wow. So you will have your hands full. Yes. But I'm ready for it. You're ready for it. I'm ready for it. <laughs> now, there are, I saw you on TV <clears throat> with the debates. Now, when is the next debate? Uh, it's uh, April 18th, I believe. It's in New Canaan. That's the last one. That's the new. The last one. That's the last one. That's the last one. And the elections the, are in. At, we have the convention in May. Then after the convention, it's going to be a primary within the Republican Party, and uh, that is going to be in August. Whoever wins the primary is going to face a Democrat in November. How do you How do you think your chances are? Very good. I'm Fair. going to win. I'm going to win. Very good. Going to win. Very good. I'm going to win. I'm your next governor. And I'll come over here for an interview the day I get sworn in, the following day. Are you sure? Now? I'm positive we, I'll do that, okay? <laughs> hey, I'm not one of them, okay? <laughs> so you do believe that you, you're going to be the next governor? I am in very good position to win. Uh, I, everything can change because it's a lot of time. Uh, but uh, I have a lot of support. Uh, the reception is great. I have raised over $500,000, uh, more than any other Republican in the history of SEP. I'm qualified. I got more endorsement than anyone else. From 2014 to present, I have done more jobs and I mean more work trying to recruit people in the cities and people who have moved into our state as new citizens than any other Republican. I'm the only one who's going to be able to get the, the, the to a certain extent the city vote because I'm, I'm introducing things that are or policies that will benefit the cities, such as changing the educational school, school system, which we're going to do that. And I think the Eastern Europeans, who are about 75,000 of them will vote Republican for the first time in 2018 and we're recruiting them as we speak. Now how will you draw the African American community to By being honest with them and fearless. The African American community and I hate to use those hyphenated things because they are Americans just like you and I are right, right. and I hate to use that but we have to be truthful with them. The Democrat Party has failed your community. Right. Who runs Bridgeport? Who runs uh, Hartford? New Haven. You name me a city under the, the, the control of the Democrat Party that is succeeded. I think when uh, President Trump said, what the hell do you have to lose? I mean, just think about it. We have nothing to lose in certain cities. Give the Republicans a, a try. And if it doesn't work, go back to the Democrat Party. Look at the, the, the history of the Republican Party. If you go back to 1854, the, the, the anti-slavery wing of the party, the Whigs were called at that, that time, they established the Republican Party with the intent of freeing the slaves at that time. Right. It was anti-slavery party. Look at the 13th and the 14th and the 15th Amendment. Who voted for those amendments? All the Republicans. No Democrat. Look at the 1960s when you have the movements over here. Who voted to get rid of those oppressive rights that were being abused in the United States? The Republicans. The 1960s, the Democrats took it over. And they turned the Republicans into racists. I think the Republicans should go into cities and be frank about it because they are not racist. And I'll tell you one thing. If the Republican Party were, were racist, I wouldn't be with them. Right. I wouldn't be with them. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I would be the first one to leave the party. And as I said, I hate using when people call me Albanian American. It right. sort of insults me. But I chose to be an American by choice. I could have been Australian if I wanted. I came here as a refugee to, to be an American. So stop using that hyphenated thing. What is this Hispanic American, uh, Black American, African American, Albanian American? No, I'm an American. And you are an American. And we should be called Americans and referred as Americans. And we should get elected officials who serve the American taxpayer, regardless of their race or greed or anything else. Now, mm -hmm. what I would like to do in the future is get you back here and get a Democrat up here and get their views on what you're discussing today. I'll debate any Democrat anytime. Absolutely. And look, having a debate is a healthy thing for our society. Right. We should agree to disagree. This is not personal. 
This is anybody who wants to run for a statewide office or any other offices should have the audacity of facing a Republican or vice versa, a Republican, a Democrat, and make sure that we get the, 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 the best policies implemented for our state and our towns. This is not about Republicans and Democrats. I, don't, I couldn't care less about the R's or the D's you know, next to their name. Right. N All right. Well, we, we definitely got to get you back. I'll do so. Now I promise. Now, you still practice law in Connecticut. I practice law in New York City. And New York. And the Bronx. You're in the Bronx. The I'm Bronx, a, baby. I'm, 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 I'm Vernon. Hey, look, I know where it is. I, I'm on Arthur <laughs> Avenue in the Bronx, okay? Okay. I'll you know where the guys right. hang out with the <laughs> restaurants and these. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> it's a nice town, man. <laughs> I know exactly. It's a nice town, man. It's a nice town. Of course I am. Okay. Of course I am. Okay. I, I've been to Mount Vernon a number of times. I lived in New York for 17 years. Okay. I know Westchester County very well, which taxes are killing Westchester, Westchester County. County. Absolutely. Is Absolutely. It's being killed with property taxes. Killed with property yep. taxes. That's, this is the problem in our state, too. Property taxes are killing us. It, we have to lower property taxes and any tax we can. Do you know that we have 120 20 taxes and fees in our state that they cost us more to collect than they bring in revenue? It costs more to collect yes, taxes. Yes, than they bring in revenue. I mean, how? what is the common sense over here that our leaders have? Oh, they're not leaders. They're politicians, so they have no common sense. But uh, the <laughs> truth is that we have to reverse this, and I intend to do that if I get you know, the support that I need out there. Right. That's interesting. You said it costs more to collect the tax. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. It costs more to collect than it brings in revenue. But then, as I said before, we have no problems with revenue. We have problems with spending. We have to stop spending. We just have to do it. We just have to do it. Yep. Well, it was great talking to you. We, we, I know you got to get out of here. Yes, of I you're, you're do. On the move. I do have uh, another event we, we coming gotta up. Got to get you back on again. Promise, I'll come back. I, I promise. I, I appreciate I'll come back. You coming. And I'll tell you one thing: What's the that? night that I get inaugurated, you're invited to be there. I, I, okay. Oh, <laughs> will, will there be some uh, delicacies? And yeah. Some hors d'oeuvres. We're gonna get the Albanian traditional drink called raki. Okay. What is what is raki? Okay. He will tell you. Yeah, I know. He, he's a drunk. <laughs> he, he knows. <laughs> Uh, look, it was a pleasure. Well, thank you very much for having me. I appreciate thank it. Thank you for watching. Thank you. We got to let him go because he has to get thank out you. of here. Um, don't forget that the uh, primaries is in... It is in August. In August. Primaries in August, but we have to do the convention first, the then his primary, then the general. But you'll see me again. You'll hear from me again. All right. He's, he was here. He came to see mm -hmm. us. Everybody, thank you for watching. Um, please watch this. Please support this. Please share it. Um, get the word out, and we'll check you next time. Thank you, Mr. Peter Lamont. Thank you. God bless. Through. God and bless. Thank you. Out here. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. God bless. God bless. <laughs>